it's Mike with Utastic. I'm here at RailsConf 2014, and I'm standing here with Joel Turnbull, who did a talk on debugger-driven development. If I did say that correctly, debugger-driven development. Um, thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Um, so your talk, what what was your talk? I mean, what is debugger-driven development, and what were you trying to, to teach? Okay, um, yeah, I've... Uh well, it was called Debugger Driven Development with Pry, so it was called spe uh, okay. specific to that tool. And um, basically, it was a talk about using a debugger or a debugging tool not just to fix your software mm -hmm. problems, but to actually like leverage the runtime and stuff that it provides to actually develop software and like drive your development process. So I talked a little bit about that. I demoed some of the cool features of Pry, and then I kind of demoed a little bit of this workflow that I've been playing with. And then, uh, and then I did it, uh, I ran the same workflow with like a, a an RSpec uh, uh, suite and, um, and kind of demoed a, a, a Pry command uh, called define it that I had um, created that would do some like help you with this workflow that I learned based on doing small talk development. Okay. Oh, so yeah. you're actually a small talker. That's, yeah, yeah. That, there's not a lot of you guys in the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, so I spent uh, a little over a year in the 2000s somewhere actually developing a web application in small talk with oh, a team okay. of guys for a uh, company. Was that Faro or? Yeah, Faro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I showed a little bit of Faro mm -hmm. and um, showed how effective small talk is and kind of driving your development process and getting all of the goofy stuff out of the way by like doing some automatic code generation for you and mm -hmm. stuff like that like if you're testing a class that doesn't exist yet you know it'll just ask you if you want to create it and do it you know you don't have to like pop open a file and type uh you know class whatever and and it's just like a one click thing and it happens and you can just it helps you with your flow, right? right. You can so, keep focused on the thing. So that a case where I would use define it, mm -hmm. like can you describe yeah. that scenario where it... So in my in my uh, little demo that I had, I was uh, exercising a class called Bowling Game. Okay. And I, my whole, all my demos kind of focused on this like Bowling Game app kind of thing. <laughs> so, but it's a class that doesn't exist yet, so it's a classic kind of TDD thing where the first test is just like does this does this class even exist like you know you're just testing that you can new this thing up and it won't error out and right. then and then so you move from that and you call your first method on that class which you're asking the bowling game for its score and it should return zero and then there were uh the next test was you know can you bowl something like call another method bowl and pass in a uh, a, a number of pins you knock down right. and then have the score reflect that and then the next test was just like an addition of two scores and so I, I spec'd out you know all the things that this bowling game was going to do or at least four of them without implementing any of the code to do it right just in classic TDD style and then and then used uh, pry rescue in conjunction with this define it command to that when you when you call our spec under the umbrella of pry rescue it's going to break and put you into a runtime as soon as it hits that first assertion error or that first exception which in this case was like there is nothing called bowling game mm -hmm. so when you see that what I, the, the 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 tool the uh, command um, that that I created basically when you you can type define it there and just move on in the background it had it wrote a file with an empty class definition in it and then you move on to the next test and it says there did you have to say define it bowling game or did it no, look at what it already knew because you have that information the exception. in the exception itself okay yeah and so pry allows you to you have you have access to all of the context of those things and it's very much driven by like exceptions especially in the case of try, try rescue and stuff and so all that stuff is available to you and when you when you define a pry command like that you have all those things available all the power of pry 
to to just automatically you know use those things. So so yeah, just like you said, and then and then you get to the next test where it tries to call score, mm -hmm. which is a method that doesn't exist yet, and you get a no method error, you know, and and you use the the information inside that exception to and call define it. That's all you have to do is right. call define it, and it then opens up, up that file, pops you into a method, empty method template, mm -hmm. you know, based on the name of the method, the arguments that it was passed, you know, and um, and generates that def score. Uh, yeah, def score. Right. Fixed well, the method out. signature for you. And yeah, everything. method signature, right? Pops you right in the middle of it where you can be begin implementing it, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like an auto mocking kind of thing almost. It's yeah, like, I mean, it was not mocking anything. I mean, well, I mean it's, like it's, actual... it's expanding, but I mean, it, it's like how an auto mocker will listen for a call and then basically mm. automatically generate the rest. Yeah, yeah, I guess signature. so. Yeah, uh, sure. But yours is more interactive where it's like, you don't know what it should return. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You, 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 well, you, so you open it opens up like the editor where you can implement. Yeah. Um, so you know, return false, return true, return one, two, three. Yeah. So in that case, it's just return zero, like TDD, okay. like it expects the score to be zero, and you see that expectation there. Like you see the line that failed. Mm -hmm. It says, you know, ex you know, we expected bowling game new dot score uh, to equal zero. And so you can see what the test is expecting, and you can, and then when you pop into the editor, you can implement what it is. So it's, you're not really guessing. You know exactly the implementation that it expects. You know, and you can provide that. You know, when you when you write the actual method. Right. Right. So. Um this 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 tool you created is this a, like a, a Ruby snippet I would just import or is it a gem that I can go and I can add to my Pry? It's it is now maybe officially a gem. Okay. Uh, got together today with uh, um, Conrad Irwin and another guy, uh, um, John. Uh, well, that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm spacing <laughs> well, on his last but it, name, but he, as, as soon as so he 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 actually like within the past day added some more stuff on top of that. Okay. It's really cool, um, and so uh, there is like an actual new um, Pry plugin called Pry Fix. Pry right Fix, now. yeah. Okay. So. Because it, that's one of the nice things about Pry is that I mean IRB was amazing, but. Mm -hmm. uh, there seems to be more of like an ecosystem being built around Pry. Yeah. Um, where you have Pry Nav, Pry Debugger, Pry now Pry Fix, Pry, and uh, and another thing, you know, that we're here at RailsConf. Uh, uh, do you use this in the context of, of a Rails project because you can over, you know, you can override the the, the IRB console and in 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 Rails and attached to Pry. Yeah, so absolutely. Does this work inside of yeah. testing and developing a, uh, a Rails application? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, there's some things to be worked out as far as the fix gem is concerned, uh, specifically. I mean, um, you know, there's a question of, okay, so when I call define it and when a class doesn't exist, where do you put the class, right? I mean, right now, it just puts it in whatever directory yeah. you're in, right? And so in the context of Rails, we might have to add some more functionality to say, oh, pass it an M flag and it'll put it in models or something right. like that or, you know, like generate it and put it in some other uh, directory that we, we pass in via mm -hmm. a flag or something like that. Um, but I did demo, like my first demo was a, was an actual Rails app. And so I just wanted to kind of demo some of the, um, like, really cool features of Pry that exist already. Right. And so, you know, I took people about how, through how to, you know, manually invoke run times with binding.pry anywhere. Um, I showed that you could, you know, like you said, like these, all these plugins have made Pry so powerful because it's so extendable and you can do anything you want with it. Right. So I showed the Pry Debugger plugin, which adds like the, the step and the next and the continue yep. functionality. And did, did you demo the Pry RC where you can say N? I don't even know that one. Oh, yeah. yeah you can have a dot Pry RC. And you oh, can, yeah. Uh, you can alias and uh, sure. so you can say N instead of next. Yeah, okay. Uh, I thought you like that. Yeah, so my command uh, originally just lived in a Pry RC file, okay. you know, and so uh, that's what I pushed up before my talk, and we. We just took that and put it into an actual uh, 
library okay. now that you can just fold into your project. Right. But that's cool, like how you can, yeah, in Prior C, you can totally configure everything. You can define your own commands and pull yeah. them in, stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Finding that Pry has been, um, it's completely replaced debugger yeah. in, my, in my work as well because yeah. being able to, before you'd have to, Go into debugger, and then you'd have to say p, and then the command. Yeah. But with debugger, it, it I mean, with pry, it just gives you that pretty it's, stack. You can you can say where am I, and it's totally yeah. It's just like I, I said that in my talk. I'm like, it's like tiny little things that just turn like a daunting user experience that you just don't even want to deal with into like something that really motivates you mm -hmm. to like explore and like want to do cool things. You know? Yeah. It's it's definitely uh, an evolution of IRB. It's not saying, and I guess that's kind of the beauty is it doesn't say IRB is stupid. No. It's, just, it's just, no, or debugger is stupid. It's just saying it's an evolution. Right? Yeah. I think it's a real healthy thing to see. Yeah, IRB has got a very it's specific intention. You know, it's scaled down for a reason, and and it's just meant to, like, provide an interface to the language, you know, and I mean, it does that job perfectly, right? So, um, so yeah, um, well, you know, I want to say thank you for taking oh, yeah. the time to speak with me. Really Absolutely. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like it was a real fun talk. Yeah, thanks, man. Check it out. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.